If there's been domestic abuse in the parents' relationship, it will continue through the child arrangements. And that is what people will be experiencing. Hello and welcome to this which is a vlog for the Survivor Diaries. We are in the background very much where I will be making the episodes and the episodes that I'm intending on doing this weekend. This is just a vlog because really this week has been very eye-opening for me as a court user and as people who are following the Survivor Diaries are aware I'm also a family lawyer and therefore having court proceedings puts me in a very unique perspective. Um, I'm, I'm discussing child arrangements proceedings with a lot of other people, very much off the record, just giving general assistance and guidance on things arising from the video series that we're doing and getting some really good feedback and interesting feedback from the videos and also learning a lot more about the experiences that these mothers, predominantly mothers, are having through the family justice system. This week has been, for me, uh, more of my experience as a court user. So in my own personal circumstances, I have been in court this week and I'm not going to discuss that further because court proceedings are confidential to protect the identity of children. And I'm not going to discuss that in itself any further or how the proceedings are developing from there or not developing from there. What I want to convey in this vlog is the sheer exhaustion that I have felt this week since that court hearing. And there have been many people because I am discussing the fact that, you know, I am also a court user who are wishing me well without knowing any details and they've asked me, you know, what's happening, how did it go and I've been literally too exhausted to reply. And as a court user, never mind the fact that I'm a family lawyer, as a court user, the energy and the worry ahead of that hearing because I was going to have to see my ex-abuser again was phenomenal to such an extent that I consulted my GP and received help from my GP for that and again I'm getting back to this message that I constantly I'm giving see your GP if you need help for the stress that is occurring during child arrangements proceedings especially where there has been domestic abuse as a feature in the in the adult relationship and that's because I'm getting this message across that domestic abuse always continues through the child arrangements and in this particular vlog, what I want to show you is how exhausted just that, just having to be in the same room, in the same court hearing, the court before the judge, and have to hear his voice. I don't want to hear his voice. I don't want to see him. Um, and having to do that, how it, how it has affected me as a person. So I'm not speaking at all as a solicitor. I'm not concerned about the law. I'm talking as a mother, as a human being who has this week gone through the experience of seeing that person again. Consulting with my GP again, who's correctly me, fixed me back on all medications and made sure that everything's okay. And going from there, I have functioned at work, recognised that I needed to take a couple of impromptu days holiday. Um, so I've done that and I am feeling better and stronger. Last night I slept for 12 hours solid. Um, and again, it's just a symptom of the exhaustion. Remember, I've, I've said in vlogs about this busy background events happening and we've had Beakster the Duckling feature and there have been many calls for Beakster the Duckling to make a reappearance and so he will be shortly. In amongst the things that have happened this week, such as ducklings hatching, the obtaining of all kinds of things like new pets and GCSEs ongoing, of course, in amongst all of this, there has been this hearing, and I personally feel as though I've been re-traumatised by that experience. Again, there's the question on me as to why on earth am I holding, with, withholding sorry, contact from this person? Surely it's better for a, for a child to know both parents. Well, it is if it's safe and if it's practical. And if it's not safe, then I've talked before in many vlogs, and I encourage you to look at the actual episodes rather than the vlogs, about how Practice Direction 12J should be implemented when there is domestic abuse alleged in the child, child arrangements proceedings. So one thing I'm doing is in this vlog is showing you the exhaustion. 
and this 12 hour sleep which totally like made me feel better I have been able to kick back into speaking with people talking with people and one of the things that people have said to me about the videos in the feedback that we've got to the videos is what is it that they can do to say thank you if I've helped them or um, had chats with them on messenger and people are asking this more than one person has asked me this now and so I'm going to refer to patreon which is something that Paul will put a link to at the end of this vlog and if you can support us on Patreon by making a donation or a regular donation this will help to fund the Survivor Diaries channel. The purpose of the Survivor Diaries channel is to produce episodes on YouTube which will always be free which will set out practical information and advice about how to navigate your way through the Children Act proceedings private children law, England and Wales, especially when there has been domestic abuse as a feature between the parents. Because, as people know, those that domestic abuse is continuing. If there's been domestic abuse in the parents' relationship, it will continue through the child arrangements. And that is what people will be experiencing. So first of all, sharing these vlogs, sharing these, these videos will help to put people at ease that it's not them that, at the end of a domestic abuse relationship, if there are children, the only way for that domestic abuse to continue is through the child arrangements, and that's what it does. I want this message to get through to the judiciary, as well as all litigants in, in person, even people who are represented. There is a procedure that should kick in if there is allegations of domestic abuse, and it, it absolutely must do. And this is the message that I'm trying to get across through the vlogs, through the episodes, and therefore if you can and are able to support as at the Survivor Diaries. Paul's a perfectionist and he's asking for lighting equipment and all kinds of things that I don't understand properly. There are conferences that I wish to attend and this is so that I can promote and create this channel as a free resource for people experiencing child arrangements proceedings in England and Wales and especially where domestic abuse has been a feature. Patreon, that, a link for that will come up at the end. The purpose of this vlog, one of the reasons was to to show how the court has made me this week. The I am still a, a, in proceedings in the family justice system. Um, I am still incredibly anxious and upset about that as a mother and as a parent. And this is during my daughter's, our daughter's GCSEs. She needs me to be there for her and I am distracted by the proceedings and that's really sad and I wish that people can understand that if they haven't been through this it's very difficult but I wish I want people to understand how the effects of domestic abuse can carry on and the impacts that they can have I've been very open I've come out about working as an escort in the past and how my ex-abuser has held this over me I was previously a teacher I'm now a family lawyer and I was encouraged to do that with my ex-husband which of course became the most shameful thing ever when I wanted to leave him and from this there's feedback since I made this disclosure on the video so there's dis there's feedback telling me that they want more information would be would be lovely about what's happened there and so my intention is to give a full episode worth of attention to sexual abuse sexual control in an abuse in an abusive relationship where domestic abuse is a feature and that will be coming very shortly. Another thing that's coming very shortly on the Survivor Diaries channel is a complete overview of the practice direction. And I'm aiming this, yes, I'm aiming this at litigants in person. And I hope that if you help me spread this message so that I can help as many litigants in person as possible, what they will do is then take the correct procedure to the court and say, here is the law, can you please set this out for me? Can you please make this happen and make sure that it kicks in to protect me and the children? You know, I, I keep coming back to this point. People do not make up these allegations. Mothers do not make up allegations. I was speaking to a lady just today, and in amongst it, I, I said, as I often do, if I could wave a magic wand, and suddenly this co-parent is the perfect co-parenting partner. He is, and I'm being gender specific, he is happy to have the children, supports you in what you need to do, and therefore may have the children at short notice. If you work and he works, you would do the same, of course. He makes the children feel loved, valued, supported, everything 
that as a mother you want your co-parent to do and in an abusive relationship that's that's what's not happening in an abusive relationship you are not co-parenting with somebody who feels the same as you about the children and wants what's best for them and this is why they come to court this is not a, a fair sample of the population a lot of people can sort out difficulties but I can almost guarantee that 99% of applications coming to the court where domestic abuse is alleged by the mother it is actually happening and I would my aim in these videos, in these vlogs, is to get the message across that one, domestic abuse will always continue through the child arrangements. Two, there is a mechanism in place for dealing with the domestic abuse and that can require the perpetrator of the abuse to address their behaviour before they have contact. And if you have not if you do not understand what I'm referring to, please see the other videos. Please see the videos about child arrangements with and without domestic abuse as a feature. And you'll see the way that the courts are required to act when there has been domestic abuse in the proceedings. And on another a side note of things that are happening in the background, I know that the lady that I'm referring to won't mind me mentioning this, but where a court have not properly applied the practice direction 12J, it may even leave the court subject to appeal and that is something that I can see already is facing a lady that I've been talked, talking to just recently. And the reason that I mention this is because I want the courts to be aware. This is a change that only came in at the end of 2017 and I don't want to sound as though I'm telling the court what to do, of course. It is just that I am a family lawyer practicing solely with child arrangements where there has been domestic abuse in a feature, in the majority of cases, and that's why it's got to court. And the courts need to do something here. I need to be able to safely give the advice that if there's been domestic abuse and if it's impacting on current harm or causing harm to the children involved in that application, the court must stop and the court must not order interim contacts until it is decided that that is safe. That is set out in the practice direction. That is something coming up like the episode about sexual abuse and the sexual controller as Pat Craven would describe it. These are both things coming up. The vlogs will also contain many more um, appearances from Beekster the Duckling and they will continue with the information going behind the scenes in the Survivor Diaries. Our plan at the Survivor Diaries, Survivor Diaries is that the, the video logs will at some point become more private or for the subscribers on Patreon because they are people who are supporting us in real material ways that we need, supporting us to continue making the videos and so the vlogs will become more private but the episodes which give practical advice about the child arrangements proceedings they will continue to be free on YouTube. Okay so I hope that's been useful I wanted to catch up um, Beekster the Duckling is well and I wanted to give you an overview of how this week has been I wanted to apologize to the many people that have I've been aware that I've been in court and asked how I am that I've not yet been able to respond to um, and I will be getting back to people as soon as I can. Okay, I hope again as always that this is informative and helpful and I look forward to speaking to you in the next vlog and or episode of the Survivor Diaries. Thank you very much and goodbye.